The name of this song is Run the Streets. It's a show tune for a mountain bike World Cup season that's set to be an absolute classic. Long, tough, and fast. All right, you've got my attention. The backbeat for engineers and mechanics to wax rhapsodic about the Mozart in the machine. I like it so far. The soundtrack for six months of racing and the Hunter S. Thompson observation that for every moment of triumph, every instance of beauty, many souls must be trampled. Okay, come on, let's do this for real. You know I run the streets, in a fast life, you know what it's gonna be. I'm in my environment. All white people cheat, you know I run the streets, in a fast life, you know what it's gonna be. The rainbow stripes are the world champion's jersey. Like a Steve Jobs turtleneck or a Lady Gaga dress, it's an article of clothing associated with a certain type of genius. A status symbol for the 0.001% in cross-country or downhill that indicate that they're the best in the world. Uh, kinda. Last season in my first year racing elite, I came out of nowhere at World Champs to win the rainbow jersey and came into the season with the target on my back. Here's the deal. To claim the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup overall is a much bigger ask than any one day World Championships win. Eight races in downhill, seven in cross country. Six months where illness or an off day will asphyxiate your aspirations. A hundred different opportunities for a flat tire or mechanical to defecate on your dreams. World Cup overall is something I never achieved. I don't know if it will be this year or not, but just, you know, casual dream of my life. It's a season-long bet on yourself against improbable odds. You versus an almost unfathomable level of athletic and technological consistency. A man? For woman? I'm for machine. The bike matters a lot when it comes down to race day. If the bike's not working well, you just have to work that much harder to go fast. I think it's about the connection between the rider and the bike. You could be on the best bike, and if it's not set up the way you want and you're not comfortable riding it, you won't push in the same way. You spend time a lot on your body. You have your fitness and your reflexes, but you have the way the bike responds to the ground, and the bike is your extension when you ride. Even though sometimes it's hard in winter to spend so much time testing and runs, 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 focusing on the bike, feedback, feedback, retest, but when you find that perfect chemistry, it's like, okay. Now I can go fast. Chemistry. Close. Finding the winning blend of man and machine may actually be more akin to alchemy. It's a process that begins long before the first race, where a team of engineers and mechanics attempt to transform aluminum or carbon fiber into the most noble metal of them all. Gold. The first race of the season is always a cocktail comprised of one part nerves mixed with equal part expectations. The first opportunity to test training and race strategy. Six laps of the four kilometer circuit here in Germany. Where the only real guarantee is pain. And you see how fast the London Nav is already here in the beginning of the race. Kate Courtney, she's with her. Yolanda was leading, and I managed to get away and get a small gap already on the start line. 
Well, Courtney, meaning business today. Just kept pushing and, and trusting my form there and was able to extend that lead. I'm wondering actually how slippery it is still at the moment. Oh, big one. Down she goes on the wood. That was a big fall. Lost the front there, Bar. The elite women's field is so competitive, but you can't make a mistake. You can't have a problem uh, and still, you know, expect to come out on top in those races. Not entirely accurate. That did cost her a lot of time. And they're flat out on these descents as ever. With the difficulty of the courses and the depth of the field, title contenders like Yolanda Neff, Pauline ferran Provo, and Anne Terpstra are all striving to minimise mistakes and be the best at being partially perfect. Out on to the last lap. So to stay positive and keep pushing when you have an issue is something that's tricky to do but can pay off big time. Shaking her head, I don't think she can believe it either. She rode away with this one. Takes her first World Cup win here in Alstadt, Germany. You know, the best in the world is really the one who can deliver at each one of these races. So I'm happy to start the season with a strong ride, and I'm hoping to be able to stay up near the front for the rest of the year. Would you say, like, okay, that's a statement. Kate Courtney is here to stay. Uh, I don't know. I mean... <laughs> The start of any World Cup season offers the promise of a blank slate. All potential energy. A lot of little questions in my head and I didn't feel so fast on the track, so I was... Uh... An athlete's imagination, utterly unconstrained, can run wild, visualizing future achievements. Piron, the defending champ! Since mid off season, I start to think about it. Like, what did you win last year? What you gonna do? Anything can happen. It's the moment to see if my maturity can make the difference. I know I have everything to win. And then they break the beam, and future potential becomes present day reality. Two-time world champion now on track, Danny Hart. Hart leads in Maribor. When I came back to Maribor, the sponsor, the media, it was, you gonna win again? This is a battle, I'm not alone. There is like 15 guys who, who want to win. The defended World Cup champion from 2018, Amelie Pierron then on track. And he's less than a second of heart. The pressure was so high when you don't enjoy to ride your bike and like something is not going well. I think it would be a miracle to pull that sort of time back then. Piron crosses the line, one point six back. I didn't really feel good on wet on that track, but then next day the track was fully dry. I told Jaco at the start, you know what Jaco, I'm gonna try it to go faster than what I think I can. Knowing me was like, oh, it's gonna crash. The reigning world champion leaves the star height, Louis Bruni. Oh, he's up to the first rider we've seen ahead of Danny Hart. Nearly a second into the green now. The world champion starting to open things up. Bruni sprints towards the line, he goes fastest. And Louis Bruni leads in Maribor. Finn Isles, third in qualification. I felt really good on the top part of the track, so I was just riding super flowy and fast. And I was like, yeah, this is sick. And I came in this one corner. And... Oh, he goes down! Oh, just loses the front! Didn't break enough and then overcommitted to a corner. And uh, yeah, crashed. So. Just two to go here. And the nerves build for Louis Bruni because this might well be his greatest test today. Quinn, he crosses the line at six. Well, there's only one man that can stop the French domination. Coming down towards the line now. The season opener here in Maribor, so 
Slovenia, the Frenchman has done it. That first race just proved that all the testing that we did this winter really paid off. People were looking at us like, damn, they have a good bike again. If you'd have told Kate and Loic that after the first race of the season, they would be leaving with the lead in the World Cup overall. That would probably hired you as their personal nightmare. That's exactly where we find ourselves. And with that lead comes the champagne and the recognition. As well as expectation. And pressure.